I often find that Facebook is full of people to argue with. It's quite marvelous. What I usually do is I don't always go around looking around for people that I wish to debate. Oftentimes, I just look at their comments and I think, oh my god, I don't even want to get started on this. There's so many reasons why you're wrong, and there's so many reasons why that's absolutely absurd. Take cancer, for example, and the conspiracy surrounding that. Or, if you'd like, you can also take... GMOs. I could go through and I could cover an exhaustive amount of research regarding genetically modified organisms. I can look at meta-analysis of genetically modified organism studies and studies related to that. I could explain them in an easy manner. I could also cite all of my sources, do everything properly, and these people would still be willfully ignorant. You are not ignorant. I'm sorry, I mean, you are ignorant if you know the truth. These people know the truth. They know they are wrong. They know they are being ignorant. You have to know the truth in order to be ignorant. Also, so anyways, the topic of discussion I had here was today, I, I kind of got sidetracked there, is about spanking. And I'm going to be covering some information regarding it, with my sources mainly being Psychology Today, some information from Wikipedia, the some, just some information on the regression fallacy, and parliament.gc.ca, there is a research publication done regarding, I think it was... Yeah, section 43 of the Criminal Code of Canada. I'm going to be going into that a little bit further in a little bit more time here. But I just wanted to start off by saying that please think about this in a logical manner. Do not just get upset and say, okay, well, have you had a child before? No. Then you don't know what you're talking about. That's ridiculous. I can walk into a restaurant, I can try some food. And if for some reason the food tastes absolutely atrocious, then do I know what I'm talking about? I've had food before. I may not be a chef, I mean, I didn't make it myself, but I can kind of guess here that uh, in this case this food is no good. And I don't need to be a chef to be able to make that, or to come to that conclusion. And that's true with anything. Take information technology, for example. One of the things that I find most tantalizing, or most, most annoying, is when people say, okay, why well, not this to be true? And I often use, I often cite these logical fallacies pretty frequently, post hoc, ergo proctor hoc. And I go through all the all these kind of things and I try to explain to them and I try to give them a little bit more technical insight on the matter and they may not listen. And that's pretty frustrating to me as an IT tech. And I assume that will be pretty frustrating to the chef who is listening to somebody say this is absolutely horrible. But so long as you do in fact know that it is actually horrible. If there is a rat for some reason sitting on top of a piece of toast beside your eggs, then you pretty much know that it's bad. If, for example, somebody tells me, okay, my modem keeps rebooting every single day. I tested the power. It's fine. I'll say to them, perfect. Thank you for that information. I now know more. Going forward, I can fix your issue. That has not frustrated me. In if this case, if I went to the chef and I told him, okay, well, there's a rat sitting right on my toast. he would have been like, oh my god, I'm so sorry about that. Let me get that fixed. Please don't sue me. Stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of an extreme here, but regardless, I'm getting sidetracked yet again. So this is, like I said, a Facebook debate that I had, and this is a clipping from that debate. And this is about adults striking or specifically spanking young ones. 
stopping adults from physically striking those younger than them when scientific research clearly indicates such an action is not only worthless, but may very well be detrimental to children is a far cry away from being of a dictatorial nature. Just because you are a parent does not mean that you know what is best for your children, especially when science a study of causes and effects in this case says otherwise. And right here I linked two articles from Psychology Today citing some psychology research, of course, on how they've indicated that spanking actually harms the brain or that's bad for all kids. Some, especially more for others. I mean, if you start spanking a child with mental health illness already, it could cause it to flare up significantly more. Murray A. Strauss Strauss's research through going out on a sorry, Mari A. Strauss's research though going out on more of a scientific limb does link up some correlations between future aggression and spanking. Don't forget the correlation does not equal causation. Come hawk ergo propter hawk. What you're doing when you engage in corporal punishment which is what it's called, spanking is classified as such, is something called transference. It makes your child approach every situation in a far different manner all throughout their lives. Whether Would you rather them approach a different situa situation with intellectual rigor rather than avoiding I apologize that it seems I have squirreled. Anyways, would you rather them approach a violent situation with intellectual rigor rather than avoiding fighting simply over fears of punishment, which you all know does not work? When your kid goes to parties at school, what do you think happens? Don't be so naive. I think it was Albert Einstein who once said that if we avoid doing bad things, they're paraphrased of course, for fear of punishment than mere sorry lot indeed. We should be altruistic in our nature, which is my addition to it. Wouldn't you rather a child come to a conclusion that they detest violence in the first place? You're teaching them bad decision making because your child will believe that a way to get what they want is through forceful means, which is what you are doing. Not to mention, when you state that my parents spanked me and I'm fine, I beg to differ. You are exhibiting a clear logical fallacy making such a statement, post hoc ergo propter hoc, or first before then after, which basically states that since event Y, Y equals you being good, followed event X, X equals spanking, therefore event Y must have been caused by event X. Not to mention, you are also demonstrating regression fallacy by failing to account for natural fluctuations. Example here by Wikipedia. The pain subsiding a little while after it has gotten worse is more easily explained by regression towards the mean, assuming that the pain relief was caused by the doctor is malicious. The student did exceptionally poorly last semester, so I punished him. He did much better this semester. Clearly, the punishment is effective in improving the student's grades. Often, ex this is the, uh, that, that was a statement, an example of this logical fallacy. And here's a refutation of that, or an example of a refutation of that. Often, exceptional performances are followed by more normal performances, so the change of performance might be better explained by regression towards a mean. Incidentally, some experience has shown that people would mean develop a systemic bias for punishment and against reward because of reasoning analogous to this example of the regression fallacy. And I've included a link to the Wikipedia article and it's one, and I'm also going to be typing or providing a text-related version under this video in the description. Basically, you're stating a cause where none exists. Your child is likely aligning himself with the means of society rather than strictly responding to your punishment. Don't forget that by striking your child, you aren't really addressing the core concerns that you had with their actions. They won't learn from that, but instead will likely learn later on in their lives through one way or another. 
Children are like little scientists discovering everything and their aptitude with regards to testing isn't necessarily good for them. Putting small objects in their mouth, for example, can be a choking hazard. Instead, I think that it may be better if a parent helps a child develop their critical thinking faculties early on. I also do suggest reading the, or reading the overview of section 43 of the Criminal Code of Canada. Again, that link is going to be provided with a full text write-up of what I'm speaking here. And you can go through and read that. That's actually fairly interesting. It does provide a overview of this entire debate here. And one of the statements that it says is that this act also gives protection to teachers that wish to punish children physically through no school board, though no school board would ever allow it. And thank, again, thank you very much for watching. And that's just a, that's just a general overview. I haven't decided to make a video on that sep on that itself. I may make a separate video. But this is more of a theoretical video or more of a, I guess, a straight to the issues video specifically. So you can apply a lot of the discussions that we had here and a lot of the research and links and the follow-ups that you can do to that article. But I do, especially if you're a Canadian, I do especially want you to read that. And I'm going to end this video with a quote from Epicurus. Or Epicurus. I have no idea how to say his name, but this is a logical whopper. Is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? This is my call in God, Epicurus, or Epicurus. There is two Wikipedia articles which explain the problem of evil, and there is another one called Theodicy, which is Theocracy's attempt to answer this logical whopper from Epicurus, and again, I can likely refute that fairly easy as well that actually is going to be getting its own video later on so please please be looking out for that thank you very much have a great day bye, -bye.